stop please stop making these eight commonly made mistakes when it comes to shooting video whether you have a dslr mirrorless camera or even an iphone Hi, my name is C. Santos, and this channel is all about helping you and inspiring you to create content with whatever means necessary. So if you're interested in learning about technology, gear, other ways of creating content, make sure you subscribe and the bell for notifications. So let's go on and talk about commonly made mistake number one. Underexposing or even overexposing your footage is one of the many common mistakes that people make when starting and their content creation journey. One way to avoid these two mistakes is by using the tools that are available on your camera. There's usually two tools that you can use. It's the light meter, and if you have the ability to use histograms. So what the light meter does, depending on how you have the settings set up on your camera, is that you can actually take the value from either a spot or the overall image itself, and it measures exactly how low or how high the exposure is on that image or in this case the video you're actually shooting. In most case scenarios you want to make sure you're exposed a little bit to the right but keeping in mind the skin tones and maybe the scene or the vibe or the feeling you want to capture when shooting that content. Also keeping in mind the environment you're shooting in. If you're shooting outside and your subject's in super bright daylight, your background's most likely going to be overexposed if you're trying to focus on your subject. This first mistake is super easy to make, so don't worry, you're not the only one that has over or underexposed their subject. We all learn, I know I have, I've done this plenty of times throughout the years, and it's continually a thing that I'm learning to master. And now on to mistake number two, and that is using odd or weird focal lengths. Choosing the right focal length is going to depend on obviously what you're looking to create, the feeling you're looking to give, whether it's a short film you're looking to create, maybe it's a talking head format like this, maybe it's a television production. It all really depends on what you're looking to create at the end of the day. So considering the effects that focal ranges have on the human body, especially the face, having a wider focal range on you requires you to have the camera closer to you for it to grab the necessary field of view you're actually looking to get. So this can give an awkward look. Maybe some people don't like that wide look that it gives their face. So just keeping that in mind, it could be a mistake, but in reality, it could also just be a look that you're actually going for. Obviously, when you're starting off, it's easy just to put everything on auto and let the camera decide the shutter speed, the aperture, and even the color profile. This can be a really hard habit to break unless you're just vlogging and you can care less of how the image looks like because you're trying to tell a story rather than make it look good. But for those of you that want to capture the best possible image and maybe even push it a little bit in the post-production process, shooting in the standard color profile is going to obviously leave you with some limitations in the post-production process. So if you have a camera that has the ability to shoot in a log recording, I highly recommend you learn how to properly do so. Depending on the camera system, there are different ways and actually ways that you can actually mess up and overexpose or even possibly underexpose your footage when you're shooting in log. A lot of these camera systems that shoot in log actually have a higher dynamic range in this profile versus using the standard color profile. This obviously will vary depending on the camera system that you actually have, so just keep that in mind. And also, especially keep in mind to learn how to shoot properly in that log format. And now this is probably one of the most commonly made mistakes is leaving everything on auto. And what this can do is this can actually leave a super high or even sometimes super low shutter speed depending on the scenario or how much light there is that the camera is actually able to obviously use. The rule of thumb when it comes to shooting video is keeping your shutter speed twice the frame rate. There are obviously different nuances to this rule, depending obviously if you're looking to shoot in a super high frame rate. So when you actually don't use this rule and you go against it, like let's say I shoot at a one over 25, I'm going to start looking really choppy. And the same is true if you're using a really high shutter speed, you end up looking a little bit abnormal and it just leaves the viewer kind of feeling like there's something wrong with the video. And just like the focal length, the f-stop that you end up choosing or being able to choose is going to obviously give a certain look or feel to your video. I have seen people make the mistake of using a super high f-stop, especially in super bright environments. I've actually made this mistake recently and what this does is that it actually exposes all of the really dirty parts on your glass to the video. Think of the f-stop like the iris in your eye. When it's exposed, 
to really bright light outside, the iris closes so it allows less light into your eye. The same is true to your camera system. The more you go up on the f-stop, the more the iris in the camera closes. And what this does is it makes all the little fine details that are on your glass, dirt, specks, even on your sensor, more prominent and will show up in the footage. So if you don't often clean your glass and especially your sensor, you're going to have a bunch of specks and dust on your footage that can be removed in the post-production process, but are just really annoying to do. And you just don't want to do that unless absolutely necessary. Like I mentioned before on this channel, when it comes to creating content, video is only 50% of the content you're creating. Understanding how to properly set up your audio on your camera, especially when using a shotgun mic or maybe even some kind of wireless lavalier system, it's important to know what settings are best for your specific camera. And obviously capturing the audio is just one half of that. There's obviously the post-processing of it as well as the post-processing of your video. And that's obviously a video that I'll have to create and to discuss those aspects of the post-production process that I'll link to right here when it's live. When it comes to creating content, properly framing your subject or maybe even the scene that you're shooting is super important. This is probably the most commonly made mistake. So just keeping in mind your framing, keeping in mind the guidelines on your screen. If you have a Lumix or Panasonic camera, you have the ability to use the thirds so there's these lines that go up and down right here to the left and to the right. And this allows you to properly frame your subject, whether you have them right in the center or maybe you have them in another third, like up here on the top left hand corner or over here on the top right hand corner, or maybe even down here or down here. It all really depends on what mood or feeling you're looking to give the audience, the viewer of the content you're creating, whether it's a short film or even a talking head video like this. And finally, last but not least, one of the most common mistakes I've seen so many people do, including myself in the past, and that is not offloading the footage from your project. So keep in mind to regularly offload and even back up your footage onto maybe one or two different hard drives. So that way you don't have to worry about not having enough memory when you go out on a shoot. So obviously these are just eight of the commonly made mistakes that I myself have done and have learned throughout the years of creating and shooting videos. What are some mistakes that you have made that I did not listen to this video? Please leave a comment down below. I'd love for everyone to learn from each other in this community, especially on my channel here. Also, for those of you who are wondering where I actually get all my gear or what gear I specifically use to create content, I have everything linked that I use to create these videos down in the description of this video down below. But they are affiliate links, so I do get a kickback if you use those links. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.